so in this Very good evening to everyone. I'm Neha, Ambassador of Change for Getty, that is Global Education and Training Institute, as we just saw. And today I am very honored to host this evening Mr. Ramesh Swami, who is the director of SGBS Unnati Foundation based in Bangalore, Karnataka. And so we'll be talking we'll be talking about knowledge skills uh, in today's digital world a topic which I feel is very relevant after two years of hybrid on and online learning for students. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you, sir. I'll just add your presentation. Sure. It is added and the PowerPoint can be now open for sir to take us through his uh, agenda today. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. Good evening to everyone who is there. Uh, on the call, on the talk, um, I presume that uh, you know I was told that a lot of you are trainers, parents, and so I thought let me first take very little time, uh, maybe 15, 20 minutes, to just to give you a picture of what we actually do in Unnati. The whole purpose is to tell you that this is what we do in Unnati. And then I would appreciate if you start asking a lot of questions in terms of how we do it, because that is of great relevance to you. Uh, what exactly we do it in uh, do in Unmati is, uh, if you want a quick, uh, you know, just a uh, elevator pitch, which they say is, I'll go through the details subsequently. But elevator pitch is, Unmati is a training program of 35 days for the underprivileged youth in the age group of 18 to 25 with 300 hours of program which includes english life skills values basic computers a vocation with a guaranteed placement in a corporate which fetches them anywhere between 14 to 18 thousand rupees with social securities this is a guaranteed placement job oriented training program this is what unnati has been doing we have done this for over 19 years over 55000 youth have been placed across various 30 odd training centers in the country and this year is a very important year we have a second parallel program called unix I'll come up with. Let me just go through the slides. This is our head office in Bangalore. Uh, we brought it up in 2008. The idea was it should be extremely inspiring. The sound is going properly. Right? It should be extremely inspiring to the underprivileged youth. We said it should be like an IAM for the poor. That was the whole concept of bringing up such a beautiful building. Next slide. Next. So our mission, vision mission is to train a million youth. It's a journey. For me, it's always a journey. The destination is there. We will work for the just destination. But what we enjoy is the journey. And I presume it is all for all of you as a teacher, as a trainer. On a daily basis, we enjoy what we do. Next. 
So we conduct training program, as I told you, the age group is 18 to 25. The age group for us is 18 to 25 because we are largely an employability program, right? And as an organization, it is about the transformation which we create in 35 days. Lesser of knowledge, more of transformation. Lesser of learning, more of implementation and doing. Next. Yes, Unnati was formed with three basic principles. One, if we train somebody, we must give them a job. So I always ask my own change makers, we call our trainers change makers, what is our attempt? Our attempt is to give them a job. This is our very important aspect. Number two, they must be part of the inclusive society. So as an organization, we ensure that life skills, values, and communication is part of the entire training program. Third, they must be a change agent from the community. So somebody looks at them and says, this person was not like this 35 days back. If that person can change, I can change. And that is how we ensure that the continuity happens. This, the next slide is about the value system. This is a very important slide and I'll just take a few minutes on this slide because this is relevant. When you ask me questions later on, a lot of it will be from here. In a sense, a lot of it, the answers will be from here. So as Unnati, we talk about authenticity. When I say authenticity, we talk about trustworthiness. We talk about unpretentious thing. We talk about the intent. I said giving them a job. Why we are doing what we are doing? The entire question is why. When I come to quality, I'm talking of professionalism. I'm talking of the beauty, the ease with which we deliver this 35 days and create that change. So it's about excellence, continuously improving on ourselves. The effectiveness, when I say job guaranteed, I guarantee there is no institution in this country which will write in their profit. There are many institutions which ensure 100% placement. Do they write in their prospectors on our own document? In every document of Unnati, you will find guaranteed placement. That is what for us is effectiveness. The philosophy of dedication, we all love the job what we do. It is a fierce commitment which we do. So this is, these are the values which drive us as an organization. So it's a very simple program, as I told you, 35 days, we teach all these aspects and give them a job. Next. The vocations, what is the gamut? Somebody who's not gone to school, somebody who's not seen the shelter of a school, to somebody who's a graduate. Somebody who's not gone, had any education, could be into hospitality, could be into retail, back-end office, could be into bed care as assistance, those kind of things, slightly better, 10 standard plus, could be into retail, field sales, slightly better, could move into uh, BPO, data admin, business associates. So it's a gamut of things. Next. In the last three, four years, we started a bridge, a bridged model of Unext in government colleges only for the final year. This is a 165 hour, 30 days of three hours, plus a blended learning through the LMS, another 75 hours. This is for the final year where we teach them English life skills values and actually assure them a job because they have to come back to us after they have finished their graduation. They are all in the college, they complete it and then come back to us. So the idea is you come back to us, we'll guarantee you a job. And this is what we train them in. Next slide. This again is an important slide for all of you all to understand that what we cover in the UNEX is about life skills, communication, values, HR skills. So ultimately, the goal of all of us is to ensure that they get a job. 
we have all the government uh, approval. We are working very closely with the government of Karnataka Education Department to ensure that we do a lot of youth. This year alone, we have planned 25,000 youth to be trained and placed. That's the whole idea behind it. Some of the employers whom we deal with and do it. These are the centers where we have in Karnataka, we are in 16 centers. Uh, other places outside Karnataka, we are in Tamil Nadu, we are in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, we are in Delhi in four centers. We are starting our fifth center in Okla, we are in Nagpur, we are in Kamote in Mumbai, which started this week. So that's that's the uh, brief about where all we are. Um, this is important. We started this program in 2003. It was a give back to the society. We thought if we can train 50, 60 people and do something, it will be a great thing. We saw the impact. By 2011, we formed this foundation and started driving Unnati across all centers. Um, we are in 30 centers and then now units. The specialty of this organization is the entire top management, the next level management, we are all pro bono. All of us are doing this out of passion. For us, we have all come up from a very, very ordinary background. And for us, it is, we realize that if education is given mm -hmm. to the youth, to a family, if a job is given, that entire family status changes. Let me tell, talk about a dream which we had when we started this program, right? Go back to your home, you'll find, check out your maidservant, some lady, vegetable lady, anybody. Ask her her story. She'll tell you when she was around 17, 18, her father is a drunkard, not bringing money home, and her mother was worried she found a boy who she thought is far superior to her husband, got her married. Two, three years down the line, they have two children. The husband is under pressure. His earning is not enough. He leaves her and goes or behaves the same way. The history repeats. She has two children. She started working to manage them and the whole situation is like that. If this girl was sent to Unnati, at that time of 18 years. In 35 days, we would have trained her and given her a job in a corporate which fetches them anywhere between 14 to 18,000 rupees with ESI PF. The ESI would have helped the family in terms of father, mother, in terms of health. In three, four years, because she is the main breadwinner now in that family, she will not be married off for another few years. Three, four years down the line, she is earning nothing less than 25, 30,000 rupees in a corporate. Whom will she marry? Obviously, she will marry somebody who is earning 30, 40,000 rupees. In a period of three, four years, you have changed the entire status. Somebody who is earning less than 10,000 suddenly is in a family where they could be a joint income of 60,000 rupees. That's the power of this program. Second, we are very confident that this lady will ensure that her children are educated. That's the long-term impact which will happen. Our admin cost is less than 5%, as I told you, because of the tightness and the IT interventions which we have brought in. This year, of course, we have, I told you about the target for this year, next 25,000. We are a very small team. Our entire program cost any center is about four people, three change makers who do the training. It is an 8.30 in the morning till 6 in the evening. Our entire life cycle of the youth is captured on cloud. Our LMS learning management system, which is there, has over 600 videos and over 120 questions every day for the youth to be answered. Everything is IT driven. Next. This is the core team and 
I I will try and you know the idea is I would love to hear a few questions from you so that I am able to give you all relevant answers which will make your understanding important. Right? The whole idea is that. So I I you know go back to Neha and would like to ask her to moderate and take questions i'm available here to answer you can shoot oh uh, well, well thank you so much sir for uh, you know uh, taking us through your organization and let's begin with some questions a uh, would you like to i think you've already mentioned but would you like to you know expand in detail and also reiterate uh, exactly you know the target uh, i wouldn't say target audience but what are the people that you cater to? You know, what are, you talked about, uh, you gave an example of a maid. So maybe, you know, just expand in detail as to uh, what kind so of when, people you serve. So when, when we were doing in 2003, those days, mm -hmm. eighth standard was a very big barrier, right? You used to come yes, up to eighth standard and then drop out. The first exam used to happen in eighth standard. Then the second was in 10th standard. So you used to get yes, a sir. lot of youth in those days who were eighth standard, fifth standard, all that. These yes, days, sir, because yes. of the government system, you find that they are passed, passed, passed. So the first barrier somewhere is 10th standard. Even that is very loosely held. So what has happened Absolutely. is the, the qualification of the youth is nearly 10th or slightly more. The quality has not changed. But education levels have gone into 10th standard. Right? But Absolutely. unfortunately, so the catering, we cater to a youth in that levels of, let's say, 8th mm -hmm. standard to dropouts of graduation, 12th standard fail these days, more. Okay. Maximum number of youth is in that range of 12th, st 12th standard fail pass, which is almost around 35%. Another 40 odd percent is dropouts of graduation. 40, 45 percent okay. dropouts of graduation. Then you have 10, 12 percent who are in that, you know, eighth standard, 10th standard fail, 10th standard pass. Those 20 percent come in that bracket. Okay. That's the youth. These are largely from. Uh, we cater to a lot of youth in the rural area, right? Uh, but irrespective of it, whether they are rural or urban, right? Mm -hmm. They are communication is terrible right they they okay. just are not there in place many of them are extremely intelligent i've seen the youth from rural areas they're very good See, our system of road is it, it, it's it's like that you know you you just read you mug it up you warm it on the uh, paper you get marks have they understood it have they enjoyed doing that? Is that what they want to do? We are not able to get them there, right? You take, yes, yes. you go to an ITI or some other place. You make 100 mm -hmm. students stand, right? You ask them a question, why have you joined this course? Okay. An ITI student will say every other reason. He'll say, my father told me, my friend joined. Mm -hmm. It was free. Uh, we, this was near my house. Uh, mm -hmm. My friend asked me to do it. His father did it. Everything. But he will never say, I wanted to be working on the machine. Right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So your love for that is not there. Everything else is a reason. These are some of the things which we come across very, very often. And I'm sure your audience, your teachers, everybody have this challenge. You know, they, they, they are there in that. Absolutely, sir. Thank you for taking that question. Uh, another question is that uh, to echo your uh, agenda today, which was, uh, you know, talking about skills in a digital world. So how do you incorporate those digital skills, you know, in these uh, students that you meet or say, you know, any any other person that you uh, cater to, basically. These digital yeah. skills, as you say, you know, you give your job to them in corporate, which I think is required over there. So Absolutely. that's important. Okay. So, so one is we have to understand that computer education is mm -hmm. like a language. 
it has no yes, you know it is like english knowing english or uh, hindi or anything has become that way so one yes, computer sir. education is important as small as a language okay it is not a great skill today it is a necessity yes so earlier yes, it was a skill yo do you know computers today you cannot yes, say do you know computer you have to know computers okay? yes sir so that has become that is a change which has happened in the last few years right now having known computers these youth are extremely good with a lot of things so it's a double edged sword so they are into social media they are into everything yes are they into learning through the whole thing no so in digital world it is important to use internet because mm-hmm. earlier days we used to say you know mata pita guru devam right that is how mm-hmm. today it is mata pita google devam right you you have to know the internet right yep. how you use it now if you have to use the internet two things important is you must be introduced to english language the bulk of the things yes. are into yes. english there still you may get a translation done you may do all that but if you mm-hmm. want good quality it is important that you know english so english becomes Absolutely. an important tool number one right number two is how do you make these youth get into the internet to learn right so yeah. that is where the learning management systems in colleges in in institutes like unnati becomes an important element what am i doing with this blended learning why should i bring in this blended learning push them to see videos mm-hmm. make them answer 120 questions daily the idea is not to prepare them with those questions the idea is to get them into a mode of continuous learning absolutely today many of your teachers my teachers you can take many of them have not seen an industry many of them have not yes, gone and worked in a corporate right absolutely let me share my own thing i was doing engineering and then i went into mm-hmm. a company and uh, it was a industry so i went and asked them sir where is your cock where is this cockron boiler so that man mm-hmm. looked at me and said uh, uh, sir that is in the museum right it's not in factories it is in the museum so what i mean is you are used to learning things which are not today relevant right yes, it is not yes. relevant today the principle is relevant the principle behind is relevant the issue the item may not be relevant you are learning uh, uh, java it has moved to java plus or python or something right so where are you you are still, you have learned java how are you the idea is continuous learning how do you use the internet how do you get into the digital world to equip yourself in future are you going to go to a institute to learn a python while you are working you are not able to last 3 years one of the biggest challenge in any company for any employee has been relearning right yes People unlearning are, and uh, re- unlearning and le- relearning and equipping yourself every day right so how do you learn when you are not used to that learn earlier days you were given a book and asked to read a book a lot right and that is how you were getting knowledge you used to get from the books today the reading book reading has become very less it has become the internet which has taken over that so how do you introduce continuous learning through internet to this youth it is a challenge for every education it is a very big challenge Absolutely. and consciously we should get into it we cannot tell a youth how do you manage you know, technology you don't want your child to see some site you can block it you can use every detail which is required but make him available to internet 
you cannot stop it because the moment you stop it you are getting into trouble with his future because continuous learning is going to be the method going forward you will have short courses you are not going to be doing 3 years course you are not going to be doing 2 years course you are going to be doing 2 months things then value addition happens then implement it again value addition happens so there is a change which is happening continuously and this change can happen only through the internet you are not going to be getting experts teaching you absolutely sir so that's this a very is good the point power of digital world this is a necessity of digital world that you are part of continuous learning and who creates this requirement of continuous learning in the in the children or everybody the teacher the tutor the trainer so if the trainer is not tuned and if we are going to go by the old system of textbook questions and answer you are going to lose out on a lot of things so it's a very important element that continuous learning is part of us second as i told you the language and communication skills because that is what is going to help you do this understood yep well thank you sir for driving that point home and uh, the once you once we have addressed digital learning i think uh, we should not skip you know uh, the soft skill the development of soft skills that also required in uh, workplaces which i think the nep addresses as six c's i think something like that and so how do you you know inculcate that uh, you know and also your take on that as well so so we are we are very special in that area okay unnati uh, is very very special and we approach soft skills from a platform of uh, you know value systems you know okay um, i i i am reminded this and i've said this before well, i will repeat it you know uh, twinkle kanna was interviewing sudha murthy ji right of infosys foundation so tulkal okay. kana asked her a yes. question how come you know uh, everybody in your family is done so well what is the magic what did your mother mm-hmm. give you in uh, that sambar she asked her and uh, sudha murthy turned around and said value system so the life skills is about there is no use of learning time management alone if you don't know value systems a part of time management could be management oriented how you plan your day how you will execute it everything but a part of time management is also about mutual respect i value your time you value mine i we are able to where is that respect quotient if the respect quotient is not there in that time management your time management is not good enough so a life skills brings in a lot of information into your whole purpose the attitudinal change must be backed with a proper value system when that combination happens that is when you are respected you are required and you are promoted in your organization so you cannot be intelligent you cannot have the right skill set but if the value system is missing you will not be able to manage in a company so i am urging the entire because this is a very critical thing you know i mean, we don't talk about values value systems have moved as probably today in some ashram or in some church or in some places like that it is not earlier days value system was in the houses culture yes, was taught from the grandparents it used to come and it is driven and that is your foundation right today that foundation is not there we are talking of management let me give you an example two examples i'll tell you see when a corporate calls us and tells us we have a issue we want this group of people to produce 25 pieces instead of the present 20 pieces right 
a management guru will look at it he will say line management yes, this how you should place the table this could be there this is the angle which your hand should work this is the height all this right in unnati we look at it differently we say that this man has been working in that machine for 10 years 15 years 20 years he knows it we approach the whole thing from a value perspective and say sir if you know you can do 25 pieces and you are doing 20 pieces are you happy are you happy are you fine when you go back home are you comfortable the thought that i could have done 25 instead of 20 are you fine with it there starts the churn now he will come out with ideas now we should do this we can do this and we can bring in 25 there is a buy in from his side to make it happen so that is what is about changing the thought process the attitude to a value system perspective okay we could do it from a do this way do this this is how it should be done and this is how you will get 25 you might be able to achieve it but you have not taken on board the entire group so that is where the life skills the approach to it with a value systems matter right let me give you another example which is very very important on a value system perspective and this is especially very important for a lot of mothers and other people who are sitting there hearing me right so we take a class for our youth this is a one hour class i will do it in 2 minutes okay so we take a class for uh, the youth one hour we say what do you eat so generally they will say chapati or rice one plate of rice so we will say okay here is a plate of rice what is the cost of this plate of rice in very brief answer is 70 rupees 80 rupees something right so we have heard it we say okay how do you get this plate of rice on your table the question is how do you get this plate of rice on your table so they will start and we start using the board and writing it down so somebody will say the farmer the feed all sorts of manure fertilizer all sorts of things start coming up okay we keep writing transportation all that so we say okay transportation in transportation how do you transport a rail plane car truck okay so let's take a truck and the tire one part of the, the transportation truck one tire how does tire come rubber steel fabric we write absolutely what are we talking about we ask them what are we talking about how did this plate of rice come on the table yes sir and the value of the plate which you said 70 rupees okay. now we ask them we have taken one link you said what is it you talked about farmer so many things transport transport lorry in lorry one tire like that if we start doing for everything sir this whole wall is not enough sir. it will keep going that much what does it mean it means that so many lakhs of people are working behind it to get you this plate of rice on your table absolutely absolutely now we ask them what is the value of the plate of rice one cannot count super you cannot put a value to it now this is the answer the youth will give next day you don't have a problem there is not a grain of rice which is wasted why they have understood the value now if this is expanded this youth will not waste any resource of this country of anyone in the world he will not use water in excess because he realizes he will not use envi- he will not abuse environment he will not use an extra pen of the office extra paper so this is what about wastage and everything about it value 
So this is what we talk about, how you will bring in value system into life skills, into whole training program. And it is powerful, it is impactful. That's a very, very beautiful answer, sir, and a very beautiful thing that you're doing at Unati, I believe now. Thank you so much for taking those questions. And uh, I think uh, to conclude, uh, would you like to, you know, uh, reiterate the program and its impact? And also maybe if you could, you know, uh, link it to uh, teacher training somehow, because since we are a teacher training institute, so we yeah. always like to, you know, gather as much experience on that. Well, I, well, uh, I, was, I was expecting a few questions on those. How do you create this impact or something? So, you know, um, it's a very important element that for me, a, a teacher, a guru is is the link for everything, right? He, he's a medium. And that medium to be successful, there are two things which are very important. Okay? What is the platform from which you are working? Okay. The platform has to be one of love, care and concern. Absolutely, sir. If I have to connect with you, you may have three aunts. You like one aunt more. Why? Not because of anything. You feel that that aunt takes care of you more or is concerned about you more. That's why you reciprocate. You would have done very well in first standard in maths, in fifth standard in social studies, in eighth standard in science. Why? Because you like the teaching. I remember when I was in school, I used to be very naughty. If I'm punished and I'm made to stand outside the class, and if my favorite teacher is walking in the corridor somewhere, I will act as if I have come out of the class to go to the toilet. I would not want her to see me standing out being punished. In those days, I'm talking about, right? So the philosophy is the same. You like that teacher, you like her because she cares for you, and then you do it. That is a key thing for a trainer, for a trainer, to connect. Second thing, many of us work from a platform of sympathy. Many teachers work from a platform of sympathy. I urge I urge the trainers, teachers, to not to work from a platform of sympathy, but work from a platform of empathy. It's extremely important. It's a continuous struggle to understand whether you are from the working from a platform of sympathy or empathy. A beggar comes to you, asks you 10 rupees, or he says, I am hungry. You give him 10 rupees, it is sympathy. You look at him and say, what are you doing? What is, how can I help you so that you earn the next 10 rupees tomorrow? That is empathy. A student comes to class and says, I had problems, there was no water, I came late. The teacher feels sympathetic and says, okay, you go, come inside and sit. That's a platform of sympathy. Because not only that you allowed him to get away with something which is not acceptable, with this indiscipline, you have also spoiled the others to think that you can get away with indiscipline. Okay? You have not talked and made sure that he comes on time from tomorrow, makes him understand the importance of discipline, and then he on his own says, I want to change, I want to do something, that is why I will... I were, my word of honor is important, so I will be there on time. That change does not happen. So you work from a platform of sympathy, not empathy. Right? As a trainer, there are three stages. There are three stages. Your best teacher goes into a class. Your best teacher, absolutely appreciated teacher. Right? Nothing can be talked wrong about it. He walks in, well prepared, delivers a lecture to 60 youth, 60 children sitting there. 
gives them the notes, gives them the questions, everything comes out. You go and ask her, fantastic lecture you are given, 60 children are there. Can you guarantee me that all the 60 have understood? What do you no, think sir. is the answer? Right? Why? Think about it. So there are three stages. One is about a duty. Right? One is a job. One is the first one is a job. I, I go, I deliver. I have a job to perform. I do that. And job can be done 100%. There's no question about it. No questions on that. The next one is slightly better, which could be duty. Then you feel, I, you know, this is my duty. I have to do this. Right? I have to do it well. So there's an extra element into it. The third, which is so critical, is responsibility. How many of us in this profession take it as our responsibility to ensure that success happens. How often do we hear a teacher or somebody, I have done my job, if he doesn't learn, if he doesn't put in effort, what can I do? Very, very simple thing. But the point is, the moment the ball comes into your court as responsibility, you will start thinking, how do I change myself and start working from a platform of love, care and concern. How am I empathetic to him? How I connect with that youth? How I transform that youth permanently? How I inspire that person? When I take responsibility, I become an inspiration. When I do my job and duty, you are a fantastic teacher. You are great at your job. When I become I take responsibility, I become an inspirer. So the beauty is, are you an inspiration or are you performing your job duty? Is a question, right? It's a very, very important question we should ask ourselves as teachers and trainers. Because we have a very, very serious thing to do, right? So that is, that is very, very critical for everyone. Well, that's a very beautiful thought, I think, to wrap up with. Uh, so for everyone who is, who is watching and for everyone who will eventually watch, I think it's a good question to ask yourself if we are, uh, you know, just performing or if we are actually inspiring someone, if we are, you know, creating inspiration in our job and for everyone who is being affected with what we are doing. That, uh, that was a very uh, wonderful talk. And thank you so much, sir, for joining us today. And uh, thank you for your wise words. and wisdom and i hope everyone who is watching will definitely like to check out uh you know onnati for at once to understand what they're doing and just in case they can you know spread the word as well and very importantly you know to just to sum up uh, it's yes. an open thing anybody you come across a youth who wants a job 35 days so many centers you go and see our website it is there onnatibla.org you can refer youth. I can guarantee you, 35 days, their life will be changed. Transformed. This is our guarantee to all of you. And all the very best. Uh, you are a fraternity of teachers and professors and all that. It's a very big honor to me. I am, I am not from the uh, training fraternity. I am more from the, uh, what do you call, I, I felt that this country has to change, if it has to change, the youth have to change, the attitude has to change. So my entire approach was from that angle and I'm supported by a wonderful set of teachers and people whom we call as change makers and we continue to keep inspiring each other. That's how we work. Wishing you all the very best, sir, and I hope to see you around again. Thank you so much for joining Thanks. us today. Thanks. Thank you, sir.